Welcome back to the Padilla Family Homestead. Today we are making a Christmas classic, but with a twist because it's gluten free. Um, if you have been following along for a while, you know that this winter we are really focusing on uh, making some of our classics into gluten free so my daughter gets to enjoy them. Um, she has to be gluten free for health reasons and so we are trying to keep our traditions alive and uh, go through the process of testing and making things that don't taste gluten free so the rest of the family enjoys them um, but that are gluten free so it helps her stomach so um, we have been diving in and i have been sharing the process with you um, what recipes we have decided that are going to be some of our family recipes i've been working on some ebooks um, by the time you see this video, there should be a Christmas ebook out. Um, and so I'll make sure I link that in the description below with all kinds of fun, gluten free, um, some dairy free, but gluten free recipes to help you through the holiday season. So make sure you check that out. Um, but we are going to jump in and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare our dry ingredients. Um, and these are pretty simple ingredients. I'm just going to reference my notes now because I want to make sure I teach you correctly. So we're going to mix our flour, our baking powder, and our salt together into a bowl. We're going to start with this one. And for this recipe, we are going to use three cups of gluten-free flour. I am using the um, Bob's Red Mill one-for-one -one baking flour. It just makes life easy. <coughs> so we're gonna do three cups of this. And I kind of, you saw I kind of shake it up a little bit. I wanna get it a little looser so it's not super settled. And I have half. And three. I'm already getting flour everywhere. Okay, and then we're going to need one teaspoon of baking powder. I can never remember which one it is. It's either baking powder or baking soda that can have gluten in it. So you wanna make sure that you get a gluten-free version of it. But that was one teaspoon baking powder and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna lightly mix this together. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is start on our wet ingredients. And in this one, we're gonna mix together first the butter and the sugar. I want to wipe out this measuring cup. I'm wiping this out because I really don't want the flour in my vanilla sugar. So I'm using vanilla sugar. Um, now this sugar, I have actually gone through a ton of vanilla sugar this winter. And somehow I did not make enough, but that's because of all the recipe testing, I think. So this is mainly regular organic cane sugar um, with a hint of vanilla to it. But it tastes a lot better when it's vanilla sugar. So we're going to do one and a quarter cup. of the sugar. Um, if you don't have vanilla sugar or have no idea what <laughs> vanilla sugar is, um, I do have a video on how to make that. I have a short and a longer video. Um, and I also have a video on how to make 
vanilla extract if that's something you're interested in. So I'll make sure I tag those below because, man, the cost savings on making your own on those things is amazing. And the flavor it adds is like a double, a double whammy. All right. So that's one cup. This is an eighth of a cup measuring cup. So I'm going to do two of these. And there we go. And then our butter is one cup. So that's going to be two sticks of softened butter. Um, this has been out on the counter overnight, so it's soft. Our house is kind of cool, but it's not like refrigerator cold. So I'm going to get that in. I don't know what I was doing. I put the sugar and the butter in the mixer. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the sugar and the butter in here. Just made myself an extra dirty bowl. And we are just gonna use the flat beater. I use the stainless steel. Um, that way I hopefully get less lead exposure and I'm going to turn this on. Due to the sound of the mixer right here, I am going to be doing a voiceover and I wanted to let you know that I used unsalted softened butter. Um, so two sticks of unsalted softened butter. After your butter and sugar come together um, pretty well and it kind of lightens up and fluffs up a little bit, you're going to add in your two large eggs. I like to break those and add them individually just to make sure I don't get any shell. And then you're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I'm using my homemade vanilla extract. So my house is a little cooler this day and which means my metal container for my mixer is a little bit cooler. Uh, so the butter like rehardens on the edge. So sometimes you need to scrape down that edge uh, of the mixing bowl to make sure everything's getting incorporated. So now you can see here I am adding in my dry ingredients. So that flour, baking powder, and salt. I did realize though at this point that I forgot something. Um, and that was the one tablespoon of water, which it needs. So the trick is with gluten-free, um, any kind of gluten-free baking, is that you need a little bit extra moisture compared to regular baking. Um, whether it is adding some water in this case, or adding extra extract, or whatever it is, however you decide to get extra liquid. If you don't do that, the odds are you are going to have a chalkier tasting dough um, or a finished product. And that is not what everybody likes. Um, the other thing I have found is that letting it cool is really, really important. So you can see there that I added in the water. I let it mix just a tiny bit extra. And then we are going to move on to the next step. If you are making large batches and you wanted to naturally dye your dough, um, this is be the time that you would do it. You would add a little bit of beetroot powder in to make it pinkish, um, or you can add turmeric to make it golden. I am making a smaller quantity of dough because there's just three of us and we don't need tons and tons of cookies hanging around. So I'm just doing it the regular color and then I will dye small portions of it. And we are going to just take it and put it in some uh, cling wrap and 
put it in the fridge. Now I do decide to go ahead and put this in a Ziploc bag as well and um, just put it in the fridge for an hour or two. I don't think dyeing your sugar cookie dough is really that common and I, I really like it because I don't always like icing. We're not a big icing family and so adding some color variation and beetroot powder has nutritional benefits so does turmeric and um, I will be using mint later on in this video. So it's just kind of a fun family twist. Okay, now that our cookie dough has cooled, I'm separating it into three separate chunks. I'm gonna keep one to be normal cookie dough colored, and then I'm making imprints into the dough, and I'm gonna add that turmeric powder and a little bit of beetroot powder. Um, I get both of these from Azure Standard, so if you don't can't find these locally, that may be an option for you, but a lot of places have turmeric in the spice aisle. And I've never really looked for beetroot powder in a regular grocery store, but I'm sure certain like health food stores or whatever have them because it is healthier for you. So you don't really want to overwork this. So it would be prime to put this in the mixer. However, again, in my case, I do not want a huge batch of it. So I'm just working it through and you can tell the dough is starting to soften in my hand from working it, my hands are melting the butter. So as I'm done and after I get all the beetroot mixed in, I don't have any large marbling sections in the dough, I'm gonna rewrap it and stick it back in the fridge while I work on the next one. That way it that butter kind of rehardens and it's gonna bake appropriately. Any of your sugar cookie dough, you do not want it to be super soft when you're cooking it. Um, you do want it to be colder. So at any point through this process, when you are making these, if you feel like your dough has gotten too soft, just pop it back in the fridge. I will also say that using these natural dyes, um, less is more, you just need to work it into the dough. You can see the color difference with the turmeric. I'm really looking forward to using that to make bells and so forth. I think it'll be cute for the holiday season. Now, if you noticed, I was massaging that dough or kneading that dough on plastic wrap. And I, now I'm about to use parchment paper to roll out my dough. Now, I mentioned earlier that for a good texture, good flavored, gluten-free stuff, you don't want too much flour. You really want to have... Um, the extra moisture in it that way you don't get a chalky tasting cookie i have really found that not rolling out with flour can make a huge huge difference in that so it can be a little tricky sometimes to roll out with the parchment paper um, in this case you're going to see a couple of places where my uh, rolling pin kind of slips a little bit because it's across a slick surface and so you really need to make sure you have a good grip on it but this is going to make easy work hey, your rolling pin is easy to clean and um you don't have a big sticky mess all over the place and you're going to have cookies that are not chalky at the end. So anytime if you're struggling with a recipe where you have to roll something out or knead it out, uh, really do less is more when it comes to the flour for gluten free. Now one thing I do want to mention is if you get creases in your um, parchment paper that aren't coming out you just lift up the paper like I did there and then re-roll it a little bit because if you see a big crease across the top of it um, you will have that in your final cookie so you do want it to look smooth across the top before you pull that parchment paper off of it we're doing some of our cookies rolled out and uh, cut out the traditional way with cookie cutters and then we're also going to be doing another variation which is actually my favorite variation um, of the sugar cookie 
and that is going to require no icing and to me it's more fun to put together. Once you're all rolled out, you can go ahead and um, pull off that top parchment paper. Every once in a while, there'll be a little bit left, so I'm just evening out the texture um, if it's stuck to the parchment at all. I'm also gonna bake these on parchment lined baking sheets. Um, if parchment doesn't like to stick in place on a baking sheet or any type of baking pan, just wrinkle it up. As soon as you wrinkle it up, it will kind of form into where it needs to go and um, stay put. And now we get to cut out our cookies. I found this adorable sweater cookie cutter. Um, I think it was at Target actually like four years ago. Um, it's super fun. Uh, the other ones I've just gotten at different places, some from Hobby Lobby, some from grocery stores. It just varies on where I pick them up. I don't have a huge selection, but there's only a few that I usually use. So when it comes to removing the cookies from the tray, I really like to remove all of the edging from around it, all the dough from around the shapes. This allows me to come in with my uh, large cookie spatula and scoop up the cookie and then remove any remaining edges and just transfer that to the baking sheet. This stops a bunch of um, cookies from being disformed because when you pick them up with your hands, one, you're heating them up again, but also two, you're pulling on one section of it, which can morph the shape of the cookie and that's how some interesting cookie sugar cookies are created so that's my tip use the large cookie spatula to do so i got this particular spatula from hobby lobby on when it was 75 percent off now we are on to my favorite way to use cookie dough and I use it like Play-Doh. I roll it out and create shapes and do fun things. Um, I had started filming this and then my battery died. And so I had to restart filming this. And so I'm doing a voiceover again here because my audio did not match. It was missing all kinds of information. This is super fun though for kids um, and adults because you get to create whatever shapes you want. I like to twist and create the candy canes. Uh, the braided ones are super fun. Um, you can make little houses or um, you can make little faces, have a cookie with that looks like each person of the family. So once you have your cookie lined up on the baking sheet where you want it, then you're gonna take your finger and you're just going to flatten it out just a little bit. And what this does is it creates an even surface texture for baking and you're not going to get any weird brown bits. What I like about this is the cookies become more unique and um, personalized. Uh, you can still cut out the different colors like I did with that golden bell. Um, but you can do all kinds of different things things here and really make fun festive family cookies um, in reality your imagination is your only limit um, and I like these because again like I mentioned earlier in the video I don't like a whole lot of icing on my um, cookies I really enjoy eating a cookie or two with my coffee and so without having the icing, it allows me to really um, just dunk that cookie in my coffee. It just, it has the subtle sweetness of the sugar cookie, um, but it's not, it's not overly sweet. And I think this braided one was one of my, mine and my daughter's favorite cookies that I made this day. If you have found that you've been working with the dough for too long and it's really getting too soft, pop it in the fridge 
for 20 minutes before you put it in the oven. Um, we should be baking these at 325 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the size and shape of your cookie. The cutout ones are really like that 15 minute. The uh, These candy canes that are a little bit bigger and bulkier and the shaped ones took closer to the 20, maybe 22 minutes. So if you make a really big cookie, just know that it's going to take a little bit longer. And you need to let it cool completely before you start to decorate it. Um, and so what you're seeing here is the cookies are completely cooled. I have started icing some of them and I'm making icing that um, it's all naturally dyed, not using food coloring. So I'm about to show you me making a green icing. Uh, this was my first time making the mint and I decided to be daring and do it on camera. And um, the texture didn't come out just right for, um, for what I was looking for. So I had to add a few more things to it. But I have the ingredients down now, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through it. The first thing is when making the mint, I ground fresh mint that was a whole variety of mint. I just called it mint medley. It had all the different mints from the garden. And I used my pestle and mortar and um, really ground that up. And then I sifted it to make sure only the fine pieces of the mint made it through. Um, it's better to overwork it. You can't really overwork it. Than to underwork it because it won't dye it if it's big chunks it really needs to be powder so for the icing ingredients um the the ingredients you're going to need is a third a cup of powdered sugar a quarter teaspoon honey a half a teaspoon vanilla extract one teaspoon milk or coconut milk and then either one sixteenth to one quarter teaspoon natural dye powder of choice. So to get a pink slash maroony color, you're gonna want beetroot powder. For turmeric, you'll get a yellow or golden color. Um, if you want a brown, you can use the cacao powder. And then green, I used the ground mint. Now, what I did not take into account here is one sixteenth to one quarter teaspoon natural dye is a big difference. And um, what I did with this, I didn't measure completely when I made the green one, which is why it's doing what it's doing on camera right now. And um, I was just kind of winging it together there. And then I had had to use a lot more mint than I did the beetroot powder or the turmeric. Um, the mint requires the closer to the quarter teaspoon versus this one sixteenth. And so um, it needs more moisture in that. And I would just add more um, milk to it to, um, to moisten it up and to get the texture that you want. Um, if you try to skimp on that vanilla extract, that's fine too. But... Um, here it needed more milk. Uh, I did heavy on the um, powdered sugar. I did extra of the green and I did not add the exact amounts when it came to um, the vanilla extract or the honey or the milk. So I blew it on camera here, but this really does work. I've done it multiple times. Um, I made the pink one and the golden one and it worked just fine before I made this one. Um, so just know the mint takes a little bit more liquid to have it come together the way it needs to. Um, but it tastes really good. It's very minty. It's kind of a fun take on it. So once you have the desired texture, uh, most of the time it's going to be a little bit runnier. Um, my beetroot powder was much runnier than that thick um, glob of icing, um, but it works. And so you get whatever texture you want. Uh, I use a butter knife and I spread it around and decorate it how I want to. Once you get your icing on, you just let it sit and let it um, kind of the icing just 
dry out and create that um, more firm, not wet texture to it. These taste really good. You can't taste the turmeric and you cannot taste the beetroot powder. You can absolutely taste the mint. So if you don't want a minty sugar cookie, don't do the mint. I'm sure you could use kale powder or um, any other green leafy type powder. This is just what I had accessible and I wanted the mint. So they turn out really cute. So use the ratios that I have tested after this video that I have shared with you. That's the um, ingredients that I told you and the ratios. Use that. These cookies did not last super long for us. We don't eat sugar cookies that often, but they were super fun. Another thing that you can do is add sugar onto the dough before baking it like I did on the Santa hat, and that turned out really cute. It was fun, festive, and different. So I'm not gonna make this one fancy. I'm actually just gonna dip it. I'm gonna frost one right here. I'm just gonna do the little bit of green. Actually, so I'll scrape some of that off. A little bit of the turmeric for the top, and I will add some beet just for the heck of it. Nothing super fancy. That's really good. I like it. And it's fun stuff you have. Some Most people, well, it depends. Turmeric I always have. Mint I have. And beet powder I have on hand. So that's something that should be a little bit easier to get um, if you don't have it. But this stuff is good. It's natural. Um, it doesn't have all the dyes in it. It tastes good. It looks rustic. Cute. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you have fun making these with your family. The uh, braided ones and the twisty ones are super fun. I like it because you don't have to have the icing. I can just dip that in coffee and call it good. But these are really good. I'm going to go take pictures and give some to my husband and my daughter, and we will see you on the next video.